Praise the Lord. Thank God for everything, right? Oh, my goodness. Disgusting creature. <laughs> Go, hold on. Your mom's coming to help you. You stay right there. Do not move. <laughs> That's terrible. <laughs> Nobody behind you see it, that's all right. We'll just keep it this way. <laughs> From the front pew, this way. <laughs> that's bad. Yeah. <laughs> I was wondering, she was looking like this. It's like, why is she staring like that? <laughs> Maybe she was holding it back. <laughs> uh. <laughs> Go outside, baby. <laughs> <laughs> all right we got a discre- we got that that little a little, little bit of laughter out of the way there i want to read to you this again this morning from um, the gospel of matthew chapter 27 i'll just read two verses verses 21 and 22 Matthew 27, verses 21 and 22. The governor answered and said unto them, Whether of the twain will ye that I release unto you? They said, Barabbas. Pilate said unto them, What shall I do then with Jesus, which is called Christ? And using that as our text, Pilate said unto them, What shall I do then with Jesus, which is called Christ? They say unto him, Let him be crucified. Let him be crucified. And I want to do a part two of last Sunday's message, since I only got to the introduction the last time. (laughs) I want to preach about what will you do with Jesus, part two. That's a difference, right? (laughs) Marvin, would you please pray? What would you do with Jesus? Father, thank you for our pastor. Father, thank you for each soul that's present. Father, let let us uh, stay focused and take this message applied to our life and do what is pleasing in your sight, giving you all the honor and glory. Father, bless the message and the messenger in Christ's name. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Thank you all for being here. Thank you for your giving. And allow me to preach to you the word of God. I count it a privilege that you will allow me to do that. To to share with you the word of the Lord. And uh, I'm preaching about what will you do with Jesus. The big question. And uh, I'm glad this question is in the Bible. Pilate asked it to the Jews. But uh, the question is posed to all of us. What will we do with Jesus? And uh, we know today that the world can't stop talking about Jesus. Right? He came over 2,000 years ago, died on the cross for our sins, rose again from the dead. Let me turn this fan away so I don't create all this feedback. Died for our sins on the cross and rose again from the dead on the third day, ascended back into heaven, as the scripture told us. But yet, they can't get enough of him. The atheists can't stop talking about him. The sinners can't stop trying to avoid him, and uh, the Christian can't stop praising him, <laughs> right? He's been talked about uh, for generation, and will continue from now until the eternal future. It's all about, in the end, it's all about Jesus. He is the treasure of heaven. He is the one that God said that we should look to. And so the question is, what will you do with this man that is called Christ, the one that God sent into the world to be the Savior. We talked about it last night, how the world, the, the Jews and the religious people and the Romans, how they, their, their um, opinion was, let him be crucified. Even though he didn't do anything wrong, kill him. Get rid of him. Silence him. As it will, in a more modern thing today, cancel him. We don't want to hear Jesus. We don't want to hear what he have to say. Take him out of our school, take him out of our workplace, take him out of our community. Make laws to govern men, but take God out of it. And most importantly, a lot of people want to keep him out of our mind. And so that's man's opinion. We talked about that. 
And then we talked about God's opinion. What does God wants us to do with his son, Jesus? And we share, which we got stuck in last week, <laughs> didn't get out of it. But he talked about we should reverence his son. Using that scripture in Matthew 21, verse 27, he said, But last of all, he sent unto them his son, saying, They will reverence my son. This is something that the world doesn't want to do. They don't want to give God the respect that he's due. They don't want to give Jesus his place in the, the world. He is the creator of the world. And whether people like it or not, without Christ, there will be no world. For the Bible tells us in the book of Colossians, he said, all things were created by him, and by him all things consist. So if God doesn't hold our life together, <laughs> we're in bad shape. If God doesn't wake us up in the morning, guess what? We ain't getting up. If Jesus don't give us grace and mercy and love and peace and light in our life, then we're in really, really bad shape. We need Jesus. We need Jesus. And so we talked about it, the reverence. Give God the respect. The, give Christ the respect that he deserves. And then tonight, or this morning, I want to continue the message because I didn't get to any of the points. There are four other things I want to share concerning of what God wants us to do concerning Christ. The, the question is, what shall I do with, with Jesus, this man that is called Christ? They say crucify him. God said respect him. They say crucify him. God said reverence him. And in the Bible in, in the book of uh, Psalm, I just want to read this passage of scripture to you, the, the second Psalm where he deal with how the people were rebelling against God. And I'll just read this. This part is not up there. I'll just read it to you. He said, why do the heathen rage and the people imagine a vain thing? The kings of the earth set themselves and the rulers take counsel against the Lord and against his anointed saying, let us break their bands asunder. And cast away their cords from us. In other words, they don't want God in their life. He that sitteth in the heavens shall laugh. The Lord shall have them in derision. You think God is up there worrying about what the heathen is doing? You think God is up there wringing his hand, oh man, they don't love me, they don't care about me? <laughs> the Bible says, He that sits in the heavens shall what? Laugh. God shall laugh at their calamity. You know why? Because they laugh at him. Right? He said to the Old Testament, he said, return unto me and I will return to you. He, he told the, the king, he said, if you, if you follow me and obey me and do what I want you to do, he said, I will bless you. Right? God is a fair God. Right? He's not a, an unfair God. He's a very fair God. He deals very kindly and very fair with humanity. You love him, he will love you. Even in the New Testament, he said, if you deny me before men, he said, I will deny you also. Right? He said, you love me, I will love you. You respect me, I will respect you. You serve me, I will take you to heaven. Very fair, right? Very fair, very straightforward. And so going down into the Bible reading, or the, the one that will be up here, he said, I will declare, verse 7, I will declare the decree the Lord had said unto me, thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee. Speaking of Christ, this is the prophecy of Jesus, capital S, son. Ask of me, and I will give thee the heathen for thine inheritance, and the uttermost part of the earth for thy possession. Thou shalt break them with a rod of iron. I thought Jesus is love. He is, <laughs> right? Well, listen to what he's saying here concerning Christ. He said, Thou shalt break them with a rod of iron, and shall dash them in pieces like a potter's vessel. God don't play, folks. Amen. Amen. When God said, reverence my son, that's what he meant. When he said, respect my son, that's what he meant. Right? And he said in verse 10, he said, but, he said, be wise. Now, be wise now, therefore, O ye kings, be instructed, ye judges of the earth. Serve the Lord with what? Fear and rejoice with trembling. Kiss the son, lest he be angry 
and ye perish from the way when his wrath is kindled but a little. Just a little. Not the fullness of the wrath. Just a little. He said we can perish. Blessed are they that put their trust in him. In, in the last verse there he said, kiss the son, lest he be angry. Now when he said kiss the son, that's a, a reverence. That's something that go on uh, uh, biblical times. It means uh, when you kiss, like you, you kiss the, 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 the king or whatever, it means you are being subjected to that person. Right? And so God said, reverence my son. When you kiss the king, kiss the son, it means you have surrendered yourself to him. And so the first thing is God said, reverence my son. The second thing he said, kiss the son or be surrendered to the Lord. Amen. God wants us to surrender our all to Jesus. Not holding back anything in our life, but as he was willing to give it all for us, God wants us to give it all for Jesus. God wants us to lay our life down on the altar just like Jesus laid his life down on the cross for you and for me. It's a fair deal this morning. He was willing to do it all for us, and God said we must do it for him also. We want to go to heaven. We want the blessings of God. We want God's mercy and God's grace and God's blessings and God's peace upon our life. As he was willing to give it all, God said you give it all to him also. Don't hold back your life. He said if you hold back your life, you will lose it. If you save your life, he said you will lose it. Isn't that what Jesus taught us? Am I preaching the right word this morning? Yeah, you all listening? Good listening, brother. Amen. You can say amen. I'm in church. <laughs> or you can say, oh me. Oh my. That hit kind of hard. But that's what we came to church for, right? Not to be pat on the back or be tickled. And be tickled. He, said, he, said in the, he said in the latter days, speaking about these days, he said, man, man will, will turn away their ears from the truth. And they will... Gathered into themselves teachers, right, having itching ears. And they will say to these teachers, prophesy or preach to us smooth things. Don't tell us the truth. Just tell us things that make us feel comfortable. Tell us things that will make us the center of attention. I can be this, and I can do that, and I can speak things into existence. You're not God. You can't even get your life in order sometimes, <laughs> right? And they will tell us that uh, God will bless us and God will do this and God will do that. Uh, they're telling us all the smooth things. Well, God said, kiss the son, least he be angry. Surrender your life, subjected your life to God. Be subject to the king of heaven, least he be angry and ye perish out of the way. This was all about Jesus. This is uh, the scripture prophesying about Jesus. So God said, reverence my son. God said, honor my son. God said, subject your life, surrender your life to the son, to my son, because he is the one that purchased your soul. When Jesus died on the cross, he said, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. The Bible said, know ye not, when he did that, when he gave his life on the cross, he said, know ye not that ye are bought with a price? And that you are not your own, but you belong to God. He said, now honor God with your body, which belongs to God. He says, serve God in reverence and godly fear, for our God is a what? Consuming fire. Fire burns things up. I hope you know that. Amen. And so understand the reality of God. Yes, he's a God of love and mercy and grace. But he said, kiss the son, lest he be angry. I don't want God to be angry with me. And don't think that God doesn't get angry with his people. Look at the history of Israel, right? Look at what he did to his own people. He said after God delivered them out of Egypt, he turned right back and did what? Destroyed them. He sent fiery serpents into there. He sent, uh, he sent judgment. He even came down and told Moses. <laughs> he said, get out of the way. I'm going to wipe every one of them out. I will wipe every one of them out. And he said, Moses, I will rebuild the whole nation by you. Don't think God play around, folks. He doesn't play. Amen. He doesn't play. You may think he does, and I may think he does, but he doesn't. 
right? He gives grace and mercy, but he's very serious about his word. He do not, even in the book of Revelation, he said we add to his word, he will add the plagues in the book of Revelation to us. He said we take away from his word, he said he will take our life, our, our, our name, what? Out of the book of life, right? God does not play, folks. God said, oh, y'all still with me? All those weren't part of the message, just whatever. <laughs> but I'm preaching about what will ye do with Jesus. The world said crucify him and get rid of him. God said reverence him. God said sur surrender your life to him. God said also to love him. Jesus asked Peter this question three times. How would you like God to come to you and say three times, do you love me? You remember that scripture? He came to Peter and said, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me more than these? Peter went out fishing. God called him to, to serve him and to, to preach the word of God. And, and he, he went back to doing what he used to do, living the life that he used to live. And Jesus came to him and said, Peter, do you love me more than these fish? Do you love me more than going fishing? And Peter said, Lord, you know I love you. And Jesus said, feed my sheep. He, came, he asked him the second time. Peter, lovest thou me more than these? Peter said, Lord, you know I love you. He said, feed my sheep. He asked him the third time, Peter, lovest thou me more than these? You know by now Peter was getting mad. <laughs> God, you know I love you. And God said, why aren't you busy about my business? That's what he was telling Peter. Why aren't you busy about my business? Do you love me more than these? He said, feed my lambs, right? Feed my lambs. And so he asked him three times, do we love Jesus above everything and everyone else? If not, if there's anything that we love more than God, then that becomes an idol. Isn't that what he said? Thou shalt love the Lord thy God, right? He said, preacher, you're not doing very good this morning. <laughs> I think I'm doing just fine. <laughs> I think I'm doing just fine. In, in Matthew uh, 22, we'll go back to our Bible, our Bible reading there. Matthew 22, he talked about this when they asked him the question, which is the great commandments of all? And Jesus said to them in verse 37, he said, I'll read it to you there in verse 37. Jesus said unto them, thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind, this is the first and great commandment. And the second is like unto it, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. What will you do with this man that is called Christ? God said, love my son like he loved you. And he said, not only that, he said, if you love me, you will love your neighbor as yourself. In other words, if you see and know that the people around you are perishing on their way to hell, you will share with them the good news of Jesus. Right? Isn't that what love is? Right? Isn't that what love is? Man, you traveling on the road, and, and the bridge is out, and you got there first, and you realize, oh, wait a minute, this bridge is out. If anybody keep going, they're going to fall right off this thing and die. Will you sit in your car and let them just drive right on by? Or would you get out of the car and say, stop, 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 the bridge is out. Right? Now, if you don't love them, you'd be like, whatever, who cares? Yeah. They should have they used a plane instead of a car. But if you truly love them, isn't that what Jesus thought about the, um, the, great, the good Samaritan? He saw that man. The Bible said that man was robbed, beaten, and left to die. And the priest, the religious man, he didn't even, he, he saw him and he just kept going. He just kept going. He didn't go over and look at the man or anything. He just kept going. And then come the Levite, another religious man, a little lower than the priest, but nevertheless religious. He walked over, he looked at that man and said, oh my goodness, somebody did a number in this guy. He's in bad shape. And he just kept going. And then came this Samaritan, one that was looked down upon by the Jews and half-breed, 
not full-blooded Jews, one that was brought in by the Syrian government and they occupied Syria or, or, or Samaria and, and, and they, were, they were not even religious and they were idolatrous people and stuff. And he came, he looked at the man and the Bible said he got down and he began to minister him. He took oil and cleaned up his wound and poured oil in it and bandaged it up, took him to the inn and told the man to take care of him, give the man some money and say, when I come back, if he owe anything else, he said, put it on my charge. I will take care of it. Jesus said, who was neighbor unto this man? Right? Who was more neighborly? The one that reached out to him and helped him. And here he's saying, thou shall love the Lord thy God with all thy heart. He said, he said and the second is like unto it, thou shall love thy neighbor as thyself. Right? When you love God, you will do what Jesus told Peter to do. Feed my sheep. In other words, be about my business. Be about my business. What is the Father's business? What did God send Jesus to do? He sent him to reach men and women. He sent him to preach. Man, you can open up your own house and say, hey, let's have a Bible study or something. Right? This is not what it did in the book of Acts. Do you realize the early church didn't have a church building, right? They just meet at their house, right? They invite their friends, hey, let's have a Bible study. Let's study the word of God. Let's worship. Wherever they go, they were reaching out. They were, they were doing the Lord's work, amen? I'm preaching about what will you do with Jesus? What will you do with Jesus? God wants you to reverence him. God wants you to subject your life to him. Let him be your Lord. Let him be your Lord. And God wants you to love him. Love him with everything within us. God also wants us to listen to him. I'm going to give you three L's. Make it easy. All right? Love him, listen to him, and learn from him. That was supposed to be the points of the message. I didn't get to it last week, so I figure I'll give it to you this week. Is that all right? I mean, y'all looking at me all serious. Hey, I'm not here to yell and scream at you. That just comes natural. <laughs> comes with a passion in my heart. <laughs> but I'm here to tell you what God wants. He wants us to reverence His Son, respect His Son, honor His Son, love His Son, and listen to His Son. When Jesus took the disciples up on the Mount of Transfiguration, the Bible said in Matthew 17:5. He said, while he yet spake, behold, a bright cloud overshadowed them. And behold, a voice out of the cloud which said, This is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. Hear ye him. Right? Hear him. Listen to what Jesus have to say. Jesus said, Take up your cross and follow me. Jesus said, uh, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel. There's many things Jesus said. God said, Listen to my son. Listen to my son, what he is saying to you. He told us in the gospel, he said, you cannot enter into the kingdom of God except ye be born again. Born again mean that you have to be converted by the spirit of God. God has to change you from the inside out. You have to believe the gospel of Jesus Christ, that he died on the cross for your sins. He rose again from the dead to set you free and that you as a person have to repent of your sin, genuinely repent of your sin and then invite Christ into your heart to be your personal Lord and Savior. And from that point on, then you have to find out what is God's will for your life. I'm telling you some of it here this morning. Respect Him. Amen. Subject your life to Him. Love Him. Listen to Him. Amen. Listen to Him. Your righteousness, He told them, He said, Except your righteousness exceed that of the scribe and the Pharisees, ye shall in no wise enter into the kingdom of heaven. The scribes and the Pharisees were very religious. Everything they did was religious. God said, we got to go beyond being religious. Amen? We got to really do it from the heart, from the inside. You know, people do things because it's, it's, it's normal, to, it's biblical to do, but it has to come from the heart. Amen? It has to come from the heart. Jesus said, be ready at all times to go to heaven. He tells us a story. Listen to my son, right? He told us the, the parable about the ten virgins. Five of them were wise and five were unwise. And he said the unwise didn't prepare for the coming of the bridegroom. The foolish ones 
They didn't make preparation. They didn't go and buy the oil and make sure that their lamp was ready. And so when the bridegroom came, the Bible said the, the wise virgins got up, trimmed their lamp. They had oil. They got everything. They went out. They met the bridegroom, and they went in with him. The five foolish said, hey, give us of your oil. But they were wise. They said, nah, -uh. <laughs> we're not going to give you. Least there not be enough for us. And so the Bible said that uh, they, they told him to go, go by. But while they went to make preparation because they weren't prepared, he said the bridegroom came, the wise went in, and they came knocking on the door and said, too late. You should have been ready. That's what Jesus said. God said, do what? Listen to my son. Amen. Listen to my son. Hebrews chapter 1, verse 1 and 2. God spoke at sundry time and in diverse manner. God who at sundry time and diverse manners spake in time past unto the Father by the prophets. Hath in these last days spoken unto us by his Son, whom he had appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the worlds. Right? So we know Jesus was from everlasting to everlasting. The world that was created was created by Jesus. Right? God made the world by his Son. And so he said in Hebrew, he said, yes, in, 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 in different time in the past and in various different ways, God spoke to us by the fathers, Abraham and Moses and different ones and by the prophets. He said, but in these last days, God is speaking to us by his son. God wants us to listen to his son. God wants us to hear what the son is saying. And if you know the scripture, Jesus said when he, when he was dying on the cross, he said, it is finished. In other words, he said, I came not to destroy the law or the prophets, but I came to fulfill it. And let me tell you something. There's a lot of prophecy in the Old Testament that haven't yet been fulfilled. Right? It's still for the future. So God hasn't done away with the Bible. Right? And the Old Testament, I'm saying. But he said, he's telling us, God is speaking to us. Uh, even a matter of fact, when Jesus uh, sat down in the temple, he preached from the Old Testament. Paul preached from the Old Testament. Peter preached from the Old Testament, right? They all preached. They used the Old Testament. Matthew preached from the Old Testament. They all preached. They said, this is the fulfillment. This is what God is saying to us in the Old Testament. The New Testament gives us a better revelation, of what the Old Testament was, but he said all scripture is given by inspiration and is profitable for doctrines, for correction, for instruction and in righteousness and all these things. And so God is saying, let's listen to his son. Amen. Listen to his son. I don't, and then the last thing is, since I'm running out of time, I don't want to go into part three on this one. I got another message already for next week, I think. <laughs> but I, he said, learn from his son. Learn from his son. Reverence him. I'm going to say it over so you can remember, right? Reverence him. Kiss the son. Surrender your life to him. At least you be angry and you perish from the way. Love him and love your neighbor as yourself as he taught us to. Learn or listen to him, what he taught us in the scripture. And the last one is, let's learn from Jesus. Let's learn from Jesus. He said, who should I look to as an example? There's no better example than Jesus Christ. Amen. There's no greater example than Jesus Christ. He said, I came to do the will of him that sent me and to finish it. Jesus was all about the father's business. He told his mother when they found him in the temple, 12 years of age. He said, don't you know? We see not. Don't you know? He goes, King James translation, right? We see not. Maybe you tell your wife that. We see not that I'm hungry. Don't you know I'm hungry? <laughs> He said, don't you know that I must be about my father's business? You know, a lot of times we get too busy about our own business. And the father's business is set to the side. But he said, don't you know I must be about my father's business? What are you busy about? In John, he said, I came to do the will of him that sent me and to finish it. Even when it was challenging and seemed to go beyond the call of duty, Jesus said to the Father, not my will, but thy will be done. In John 8, 29, he said, and he that sent me is with me. The Father had not left me alone, for I do always those things that please him. Learn from the Father. Learn from Jesus. 
Learn from the Son. Learn from the Son this morning. Listen to Him. Love Him. Learn from Him that He is the absolute example that God has given to us. We can learn a lot from Jesus. We can learn about His humility. Whom the Bible said, being in the form of God, thought it not a robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant. He said, Preacher, I'm not serving anybody. You want to be great in the kingdom of God, you have to be the servant of all. That's what the Bible says, right? Yes. See, God resists the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. He said, The high and the lofty one will dwell with the lowly. Right? We can learn from the humility of Christ. We can learn from His love and His compassion on others. We can learn from His willingness to forgive people, even while they mock Him, crucified Him, spit in His face, disregard Him. He was still willing to say, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. We can learn from His spirit of sacrifice, how he was hungry and thirsty and in cold and sleeping on the ground and spending all night in prayer in the wilderness. Why? So you can fulfill the will of God for his life. We can learn of his priority and purpose. As he said, I must be about my father's business. Tonight I'm preaching about, or this morning I'm preaching about what will you do with Jesus? The world said, crucify him. Get rid of him. We don't want to hear about Jesus. Silence him. Cancel him. Listen to what God said. Reverence him. Respect him. Honor him. God said, surrender your life to him. God said, love him. God says, listen to him. And God said, learn from him. Because you see, one of these days, as we were preaching about Wednesday night, the trumpet's going to sound. Amen? That trumpet's going to sound. And what would you be busy doing when that trumpet sounds? Or... God can call us at any moment. What will we be busy doing when he calls us? Let's be busy about the Lord. Amen. As you bow your heads and close your eyes in reverence to the Lord, what will you do with Jesus? Don't be like the world. Get rid of him. Be like what God said. Receive him. Receive him. Receive him. Receive him into your life. Receive him into your heart. Receive him. And give him your all. Surrender your life to him. And let him be the Lord of your life. Father, I preach your word this morning. I ask God that you will use it for your glory. For as only you can do, let the word of God speak to all of us. We ask these things in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. She's going to play and sing. Let's spend some time in prayer for the altar call.
Praise the Lord. Appreciate you allowing me to finish up the message that I started to preach last week. But God's opinion on what we do with Jesus is quite different from the world's opinion. The world quickly wants us to disregard and the word of the Lord and to follow our own feelings and interpretations <laughs> and opinions. But God still say, I'll, I'll give you the five and close it out, right? <laughs> Reverence my son. Surrender to my son, too. Love him. Listen to him and learn from him. Right? Amen. There'll be a quiz next Sunday. <laughs> yeah, I appreciate each and every one of you, and I know you love God. Just pray that God can help us to be busy about him and his business and do what he would call us to do. Amen? Amen. For time is running out for all of us, whether by the rapture or the grave. We're a step closer to eternity every single day. Amen? Amen. God bless you all. Have a wonderful day. And we'll be here in service tonight at um, 6.30. You come and join us. You know, we'll be here worshiping God. And I know tomorrow is Memorial Day. We're going hiking. Who wants to, whoever wants to join us, let us know, <laughs> right? Let us know we have a wonderful time. And we invite you to come. We want you to be a part of what we're doing, but we can't make you. We just put it out there and I want you to come, okay? So if you can make it, let's come. Let's have some fun. Burn some energy all together. Yeah. Right? God bless you. We're closing in prayer for all you. Join us in line. God bless you. Have a wonderful day in the Lord. Remember to join us tonight at 630. Father, we love you. We appreciate you. We thank you for your goodness and mercy. We love you with all our hearts. And I say your blessing will continue to go before us. And you will protect us in everything we do. In Jesus' name we ask these things.